Lions fans, one pride family, we are here. It is post game, preseason game one. I'm King. This is Deuce. Deuce, what's up, man? What's up, my dog? How you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. You know, football is officially back. Uh, training camp has been a blast, but we got some preseason football. We got a lot to talk about. Number one thing that I want to ask you right away, right away, and I see it in the comment section already. Mm -hmm. Nate Sutfield. Nate okay. Sutfield. Okay. So before, before we get to Sutfield, because I did want to get to him, let's just talk about how refreshing it is, right? Just to be able to see Lions football again on the big screen. You know what I mean? Just just seeing that hot little blue against that green turf, it just never gets old. It's like seeing the blue sky behind, you know, green tree. It's just it's just something about the look. It just looked beautiful to see again. Getting to, to Sutfield, uh, I was like, wait me for the second half. I knew that he was going to start. I think you talked about this too. He's the vet. He's gonna get the start, right? Hooker hasn't played in two years. Um, I was waiting for that second half. I knew second half was gonna be his time to shine. And I was kind of bored just watching Sutfield. Like, he, I kind of saw what I thought I was going to see. Just a below average quarterback, NFL quarterback, in my opinion. He's not good. He's not good at anything. He's not great at anything. It was cringeworthy at times, just his decision making under pressure. It, it's just, it just wasn't pretty to watch. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, you know, uh, since the beginning, he's done nothing impressive to me. I don't understand why he's still here. I definitely think he's <laughs> perfect position. Just be honest, man. Uh, does nothing good. Nothing impresses him whatsoever. <laughs> he only looks good when the third unit is out there in the preseason. Yeah. That's what you just seen at the end of the game. So, you know, like I said, it's, I mean, <laughs> the the difference in between the two, uh, between him and, and Hendon Hooker was, I mean, just night and day. It was night and day. You yeah. know, and I, especially for the Twitter. I know it's a lot of Twitterverse people in here. Twitter was absolutely going nuts, just waiting uh, to see Hooker hit the field, I yeah. didn't want them to wait until the second half, bro. I wanted them to get him in there with the second unit, bro. Right, right. Bro. No, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Did you want to get to Hooker? I know you wanted to talk about your boy Nate first. It's the it's the hot topic. It's, it's the hot topic. And the chat going great. Shout out to the chat, man. Shout out to everybody who's here. Um, we all got the same level of excitement. You know, Lions football is back, so we are watching these comments because we want to make sure everybody's involved in this conversation. Yeah. Um, but getting to Hendon Hooker, bro. I okay, so it was it's been a lot of anticipation. Right. So a lot of eyes are on him. We're on him. A lot of pressure. Even though it's a preseason game, we know the first look is gonna be important for him as far as optics go. Right? You know how it goes. So right away I felt good. The thing with him, I wanted to see how he was moving, first of all. Did he recover from the ACL? Is the burst still there? The burst looked to be there. It looked to be there. The way he was able to move around in that pocket, evade guys, get outside of the pocket and still make plays, you know, create things on his own. He looked good. You know, he did have a couple passes where, you know, kind of sailed on him a little bit, which is to be expected. But just his feel for the game looked to be there overall. He laid a hit on somebody, truck sick. I'm sure you guys all saw it. Man, that's probably why he got evaluated, right? Probably in concussion protocol or something like that. But he is fearless. He is fearless, bro. He wanted to make a statement and he laid a truck stick on somebody. I forgot who it was, but, um, but just watching him, bro, he looked good. He looked completely healthy. And he looked like he's just getting his feet wet. Well, I think once he gets enough reps, when his time comes, he's going to be really, really good for this team. Yeah, man. I, I, you know, I just don't even know where to start with Hooker, man. The, the excitement, take it all the way back to where we drafted him. The reason why I was so excited, you know, all my brothers were so excited. Uh, shout out to DSN, man. We, yes, sir. We hit the roof. We talk about somebody who was a Heisman Trophy candidate. 27 touchdowns, man, 3,000 something yards. It's like, come on, bro. Just alone to add that other dimension to the offense that we yeah. need. we need to be able to stretch the field we need to be able to you know make a play out of nothing you know yes. you push your quarterback out the pocket you need somebody that can take off and run get some yards possibly get in that end zone mm -hmm. it just makes you very very unguardable man you hit on something that made me think about something as we're talking so jerry goff mm -hmm. he's the guy Right, he is the guy. This is his team. If we're gonna win a ring, a chip in the next couple of years, it's gonna be on his back because he led us there. Right? Yep. Totally agree. However, you do see, like you just mentioned, King, how different the offense could look with a guy like Hendon Hooker. His mobility just makes the defense so uncomfortable, and it makes him have to second guess. So, like I said, golf is—he's the guy right now. But if and or when that time comes for Hooker, 
it's going to be fun to watch. His toughness and his concentration, right? Because he had a pass he completed and a lineman was coming right down the barrel to lay a hit on him. And he kept his composure and he stuck in there to his credit and delivered on time and on target. So I just want to ask you, do you think that his time may be sooner than we may think? I know it's just one preseason game, but just from the early returns, and I know Goff is here for four or five years now, do you think his time may come sooner than the duration of Goff's contract? No, I don't. Even though he's exciting, it is the preseason. Mm -hmm. It is second and third string guys. It is, you know, Jared Goff's team right now. All of right. those players, all those starters, they respect Jared Goff as a quarterback. They're going to have his back and they're always going to protect him and make sure he, you know, secures his job. If Jared Goff gets injured. Michael Wood. Yeah. If, if, if he was to get injured, which please don't. Right. Um, things will get interesting real quick, especially if Hendon Hooker comes in and shows you those same type of flashes against great competition. Right. The competition that we've seen today, Hendon Hooker looked like he should have played today. It, it, I mean, having played yeah. football since 2022. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So uh, going up against them guys, I, obviously he's a level above those guys, but it's preseason, man. And that's, yeah. that's the dangerous part about preseason because the, the level of, of excitement, it can catch you. It can catch yeah. you up. You know, so uh, we've seen all-star preseason teams, man, that when the regular season gets here and the lights are on, things look different. With Hendon Hooker right now, I just think we just need to let him go out there and, and keep showing. Hopefully it was a, a concussion situation. You know, yeah. hopefully it's clear. And uh, we can see him, you know, back on the field for the rest of this preseason because I want to see him get as many reps as possible. Exactly, exactly. And like you always say, King, preseason, you're looking for flashes. Flashes. Just flashes. And the flash that I saw from him was just the mobility. That was my biggest thing. How healthy is he, you know, coming back from that ACL injury? Is he 95% of himself? He looked to have that burst. And that, for me, was enough to see. Game one, early results, I liked what I saw from Hinton Hooker, for sure. Absolutely, man. But on the flip side of that, Nate, Nate Southfield, he got to go. That's just... <laughs> yeah, it's time. Yeah, it's let's, time. Let's wrap the quarterback talk up with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's time. Anybody else that you had on your radar that you wanted to kind of talk about? Of you got notes. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's get to it. First and foremost, we got to give credit where credit is due. Our DBs, our young dogs, our pit bulls. Yes. Brian Arnold and his rake straw did their absolute job today. Yep. <laughs> Again, competition level is one thing. Uh, you heard so much going on about neighbor during uh the practices and everything mm -hmm. else. well today rake straw uh terry arnold did what they were supposed to do nobody got nothing you don't want to hear these guys names called when they're on the field right. and that's what we saw today you didn't hear those guys names called because they were doing their job out there. exactly yeah um, i think the uh the first the first job of the game i think for the giants amik robertson and rake straw had back-to-back -back plays yeah. out the gate yeah, I think they both had deflections, or I, th I think Rakeshaw allowed the catch, but he didn't allow the first down. He made the tackle, so they both made plays in the first drive. Yeah, and you could tell just by watching Robertson, he has uh, a little chip on his shoulder. Um, also, Gilmore. Gilmore was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. We've seen him previously, but injuries have you know had him out. But uh, it's good to see him back, right back into the fold, man. Uh, we got a chance to see Brandon Joseph come up with a pit today. Mm -hmm. Last season, preseason, he was making some plays too. You know, opportunity for these guys, man. And you got guys trying to make the roster. You got guys trying to make, you know, the the practice squad. You want to see them take a, uh, advantage of this opportunity, just like Dan Campbell said. When the lights mm -hmm. come on, that's when you do the evaluate, man. So, right, our secondary right. looked pretty good today. Uh, did their job, really solid job. Linebacker group did a solid job out there. Aku, man, from Ole Miss, undrafted. Got in a sack today. Definitely stayed in that backfield. Highlighting some of the things that the D-line was doing, stopping the run at first, at first, before the scrubs got in. But yeah, you want to see that. That's what you want to see out of your depth positions, man, because these guys got to be able to hold it down after the starters sit down. So yeah, anybody on the defensive side of the ball that you've seen? So check this out. That's kind of where I was going. James Houston, right? Mm -hmm. Uber talented. Uber gifted right uber athletic uber strong and i'm glad to see him healthy right he looks really really good i need him to be more disciplined bro i know it's preseason 
But it was a few plays today where had it been the regular season, it could have been detrimental to the team at a very crucial point in the game. It was a questionable late hit on Drew Locke. Yeah, um, yeah. After that pass, he was close to being out of bounds, and it was a late hit. It was one of those bang-bang plays where you know it's bang-bang and you just leave it alone. Right. And he went doing James Houston things. You guess who he is, but show a little bit more discipline because that, that kind of play can hurt you in the regular season game. And then the other play in the red zone, I think it was third down, offsides. Yeah. You can't do that. You know what I mean? Another play that can hurt you. The talent is there, obviously, and he looks to be healthy, which is great. I just need him to just show a little bit more discipline, pull back just a little bit. Yeah, man. Be a, be a problem in a good way. He just got to, you know, like I said, you got to be smart. You know? mm -hmm. so what is hitting the quarterback that late going to do for you? Nothing. Right. Not right. going to do nothing for anybody. So mm -hmm. just let the man run out of bounds, man, and, and move forward. What do you, you think know? about uh, Bates with the 53-yarder in the man. rain? Impressive. In the rain. Impressive, man. That was bye bye Badgley? Yeah. Yeah. The thing with Bates, even in training camp, you know, he had his hits and miss, but he had stretches where it was consistent from. 50 yards forward. I think he's just a gamer. Going back to Hendon Hooker, you know, I kind of mentioned that Hendon Hooker is a gamer, bro. What we see in practice with these drills and all of this stuff, you can't really evaluate too much from that. That's right. why season is so important. He's a gamer, bro. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at Bates, too. And, you know, like I said, I, I wanted to see him get more opportunities to kick the ball. I kind of wish Dan didn't go for it so much, but I understand why. Yeah. Because, He's trying to get some points on the board, you know, get these young guys the courage, trying to get a rhythm up under them. I exactly, it. exactly. But yeah, Bates, uh, Bates was impressive with that kick, man. Most definitely, it was. Lamico, that's what we're trying to figure out as well. I'm not sure what the official word is yet on Hendon Hooker. That's kind of what I derived just from the the hit that he laid. He probably absorbed some of that too. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. he lowered his shoulder, so that's probably what that was. Um, he walked off on his own power. You know, which is always a good sign when he went to get evaluated. So he looked to be okay, but we just got to wait and see what comes back from that uh, concussion protocol. We'll see. I just got an update. Uh, so, yeah, it's concussions. Him and Green both have concussions. Really? So that's, okay. That's still Green, too, at receiver, man, because uh, he was he was starting to come on a little bit, but right. I wasn't able to get out. I figured he had a concussion, too. But, yeah, they both yeah. have uh, concussions right now. So that's something you can get back from so mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, i was nervous because he had took a hit to that that uh knee when he was running for the end zone oh yeah, kind yeah. Of went, so it made me nervous a little bit mm -hmm. uh, i'm glad it's it's, it's a, a concussion situation it sucks to have one but i'm glad right it's yeah i wanted to bring up somebody else on the defensive line and Stop this me. this young man you know we've talked about he's he's transformed his body um, he said he wants to be a game changer this season. Didn't have that opportunity last season because he was recovering from injury. Roderick Martin today. Man. Uh, came up with a sack today. You know what I'm saying? Look good out there. <laughs> yeah, very encouraging, man. Freight train, man. Freight, freight train. Freight train. Him and Olivia McNeil and, uh, you know, Reader and them guys, man. I expect them to be super nasty. Just the D-line in general today was able to create pressure. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. not what we're used to seeing with this team too often, man. But right. Mark looked pretty good today. And those guys were creating some pressure out there. That was impressive. I was happy with that when yep. it comes to D-line, man. So that I thought was big time. Yeah. And I just wanted to shout this guy out. Sioni Baki, man. Yeah, that's what I was getting to next to. Sioni, okay. I, I, I didn't mean to cut in line, but Sioni Baki, man. Did you see that double move he made in the second quarter? Yeah. That yeah. looked, okay. Okay. So I knew he was a skilled player coming, you know, once he got drafted. He used to be a safety. And yeah. it's crazy. But it's just interesting, man, because he had a couple plays where he just made something out of nothing. He had a couple plays where he only got about four or five yards where he should have been stuck behind a lot of scrimmage. Just his ability to make guys miss, man, is similar to Jameer Gibbs. I'm not saying he is Jameer Gibbs, but he's twitchy like Gibbs, and his burst is similar to Gibbs. I think he could really be an important player for this team, an important weapon this season for the Lions. What do you think? Yeah, man. They, they you know, they when they drafted him, you know, it was, it was at running back. Uh, yeah. They get the opportunity at running back, but he's definitely a Swiss Army knife. They yeah. can use him wherever they want to use him. Uh, those defensive instincts kicked in when it came to jumping on that football. And recovering that fumble 
But yeah, man, he's he's just talented. He's just a football player. Yep. And that's what Dan Campbell talks about all the time, man. He wants football players. And that's that's what Vaki is, man, from head to toe. To see him go out there, man, and be able to get between those tackles and try to find some way to get something because you know, like I said, when we got to that that third unit, man, they just couldn't open up holes. You know, guys couldn't get no type of relief back there. Jefferson was right. to get out the backfield. Uh, also, even Knight back there was struggling, struggling yeah. with a, a pounder, and he still couldn't get nothing going, man. So, uh, mm-hmm. to see Rocky uh, be able to wiggle and find himself, uh, you know, a little holes and a little room out there to get loose, that was impressive. So, I'm looking forward to seeing him how he's utilized by uh, Ben Johnson this this year too. Somebody had a question too, as far as Ben Johnson, really quickly about how we felt about him tonight. Is it t- for me? It was like really grain of salty. You know, I really didn't take much from it. A lot of his stuff is just a feel out and experimentation and just getting guys involved and things like that. So I wasn't really too concerned about anything I saw or didn't see. What about you? Over the years, we've talked about this over and over. Never evaluate a coordinator or a coach period during preseason because you're right. not going to see anything that we actually do as an offense in the preseason. You're going to see the most vanilla football that you mm-hmm. can ever imagine. So when it comes to Ben Johnson, it's not even something that we can question. Uh, he literally just gave them plays out there to run and, and get some work in so those coaches can do their, their evaluations. Yeah. Uh, from our real offensive playbook is going to be ran out there. I got to uh, talk about the third string, man. And one okay. of the guys that I was looking forward to see out there, it was Isaiah Williams. Okay. Um, talk about you know, He was one of the guys when we did sign him because he's undrafted mm-hmm. when we did sign him i actually was pretty happy about it because i felt like the last two rounds somebody should have called his name gotcha he was impressive out there he kind of got the offense going he got us all the way down to the goal line again mm-hmm. but i want to see him be able to get more snaps out there a little bit earlier in the game uh see if him and Henry hooker can get some good chemistry going right. i do expect Henry hooker to get in a lot early from us fans evaluating, obviously he won the job already between yes. two. <laughs> but he's in concussion protocol. You don't know how long they're gonna drag that on. You know, I really don't. I'm not interested in watching Subfield play football whatsoever. I, I don't want to see him take any more snaps in the Lions jersey. To be honest, we talk about vanilla offense. He's the most <laughs> vanilla quarterback. <laughs> nah. he, he like he fits preseason play perfectly. Yeah. With you know, we, we wrap up with the Giants, man. Um, yeah. You know, we'll be back at preseason on the 11th. COVID sucked. But <laughs> <laughs> we here, and we'll be back on the 11th, man. We got to get you out there, Deuce. <laughs> I'm coming, bro. This is this is the year. This is the year. I'm all in. Yeah. Yeah, you, you definitely uh, got some things in place uh, for the fan base. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you guys know, for those who don't, uh, I create Detroit sports music anthems. I have a few for the Detroit Pistons already released. I'm working on one for the Detroit Lions right now. And it will be ready in time for the regular season. So shout out to my boy Carl Collins, who is doing all the editing. Go check out the videos that we've done together. He's the GOAT. So hopefully you guys all enjoy it. Just overall, man, just impressed with what i see from some guys out there. Uh, looking to hear about more things in practice, less fights, less fines. A couple more quick hitters. Dury's Fountain. WR3, WR4, what do you think? Him and DPJ are battling, right? Now. Okay. Uh, DPJ finally got a pass going at the, towards the end of the game, which is, for me, not impressive. I feel like he kind of got out there on the field a little later, too. So I kind of feel like he's in those, this little doghouse situation right now because Coach is trying to get the most out of him because okay. that people's Jones is way more talented than what he's been showing. He could have been out there dominating today. It's just not what you've seen. It's like going through the motions almost. I need more out of DPJ. Use that body, use that size, use that speed. Mm-hmm. That big with that speed, man, you should be a problem. Fountain for me is between him and, and DPJ. Uh, Fountain today didn't really have a great showing simply because our quarterback sucked. So speaking yeah. of positional battles through the three and the four, looking at running back, is Craig Reynolds position in jeopardy with Vaki now on the yeah. squad? Or do you do you think he's he's safe at three? It'll be hard for me to ever see Craig Reynolds leave the Lions mm. in general because they love Craig Reynolds so much. 
Craig Reynolds is the Detroit Lions motto in a player, which is, you know what you're going to get every time he's on the field. Hard nose, toughness, going to give you everything. Right have that big block he did last season was everything about craig reynolds right he can do the impact pack the game he's gonna do well now you got two of those players and i think both of those guys True. are gonna be safe now the other guys are the ones that's on the way out which is knight and jefferson mm, okay eric glenn right yeah he's gotten a lot of flack the last few years about his performance as a coach so tonight i did hear a soundbite from Dan Campbell that they mentioned during the broadcast. And they basically said that Aaron Glenn was born to play man coverage. And he finally has the guys, Terry and Arnold is going to now allow him to do that. And one thing that I say that because one thing that you always said in his defense, whether it was on Twitter, whether it was on here, was he doesn't have what he needs yet. You need guys who are gonna play your style. And so he finally has that now. Because I'm an Aaron Glenn fan. So my eyes are on him now to see what he's able to do with these new toys that he has. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's able to do. And it's going to take more than just one season to get it to where he's trying to get it to, right? But I'm just looking for that growth season over season. I'm looking to see what he's able to do defensively with these new guys that we have on the team, especially in the secondary. Man, only fans would think, you know, Aaron Glenn was a terrible coordinator. Only fans would do that because obviously... When you have a, a defensive coordinator like that that's taking interviews for jobs for other teams as a head coach, that should tell you something. Right. You know, those other teams know that Aaron Glenn was over here working with janitors, pretty yep. much. You had nothing over here, and he took that and just gave you enough to start winning some games. Right. He took you all the way to an NFC title game with that defense right and still i just don't get it i don't see people give him enough credit for that which is yeah. frustrating it's very frustrating because you know who got the golden ticket ben johnson ben johnson ben Johnson is the opposite he has everything over there right he has the best offensive line in the league so not taking anything away from the great mastermind which is ben johnson but if the roles were reversed and ben johnson didn't have the guys that he needed for his style and Aaron Glenn did all this time, it might be a different conversation. Conversation. You need you guys, bottom yeah. line. Most definitely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because even with the tools that he got over there, there was still times that, that during the season where Ben Johnson just made me want to throw something at him. <laughs> Some stuff he was calling out there. Yeah, they got to back off my man Aaron, bro. They got I think to. they will. I think they will because I think they'll have to. If things go according to plan, you yeah. know, which what we expect, you know, I think he's going to change his own narrative this season. So we'll see. I'm so glad that the season is underway. We are right there. We get ready to be going up against the Rams. Now, all the emotion that was in that game last season, man, I think it's going to be better this season. Uh, there's supposed to be a Matthew Stafford tribute this time around. We'll see. Right. That's right. We got a that's lot of bitter fans here so we'll see how that goes man. yeah that's gonna start chanting jared Goff for something wild you know so. it's gonna be polarizing bro it's gonna be a bunch of love and a bunch of hate it's gonna be nothing in the middle one more thing bro our two-headed monster at running back jameer gibbs is ascending everybody can see it do you think that the scale kind of tips more so in his favor as far as his usage to this season is it going to be more so instead yeah. of 50 50 more so 60 40 yeah. What are you seeing with him? It's going to pick up for him. Uh, Dan Campbell kind of been hitting at it more and more. I think uh, this is where you start to see him step forward and you start to see Montgomery a more situational type of football, which is where they should have it. You know what I'm saying? Because Gibbs is uber talented. He's, yeah. he's everything. You know, so they want to see if he can actually handle the load. And in order to do that, you got to pick up his, uh, his carry percentage, man, and, and get him out there to run loose. So okay yeah i think most definitely okay and i'm not i'm not saying like 25 30 a game to work because you know you want to keep them fresh obviously right 20 a game as opposed to 15 a game you know what i mean somewhere in that range i could probably see him going up to just to just to get him more usage but still keep him fresh for the playoffs and for his career to keep him fresh for the duration we've had a great show this has been fun We'll be doing these post games going forward. Me, my guy Deuce, all types of guests on the show. We finna have some fun this season. Yeah. Man. 
It's about to be lit. <laughs> Y'all better tune in this season. It's about to get real fun around here. And with that said, it's King, Deuce. But the luck. Trevor's everybody. <laughs>